Hey guys, in a remote village called Modra, there is a very strange temple built with incredible geometric perfection. This is the main structure and I'm putting a compass here in the entrance exactly on this middle line between the rocks. Look at this alignment. This is insane. It is perfectly aligned to the east-west direction without even a decimal error. I don't understand how such perfection was possible in ancient times. This temple is said to be at least 1,000 years old. In this temple, there are three main structures. I have already shown you the alignment of the main shrine now, let's check the second structure. It is interesting because the ancient boulders have marked specific notches in the entrances. And when we put the phone on top of them, the alignment is just perfect. There is no error. This is zero degrees north, perfect north. I have checked the entire temple structure everywhere and it is flawless with no errors. This kind of precision can be achieved only with advanced technology. This may seem easy if you don't understand the history of the compass. Today, we are able to see the alignment with perfection to a decimal digit because we use electronic devices. But let's go back a thousand years ago Archaeologists and historians say that we used primitive compasses using lodestones or crude magnetized needles floating in liquid. How could the ancient boulders achieve this level of precision without even a 0.01% of error? But there is an even bigger question. It's not how they did it. It is why. Why was such a precise alignment necessary? Why should the main chamber point exactly due east? Look at this picture taken on 21st March last year. This was taken early morning during sunrise. The very first rays of the sun passed through the center of these entrances and will shine into the main chamber. This phenomenon happens only twice a year, on March 21st and September 23rd. Why? What is special about those two days? Those are called the equinoxes. Those are the only two days where days and nights are exactly equal, and those are the days where the sun rises exactly due east. This may be news to you because you may have previously thought that the sun always rises in the east, but that's not true. It keeps rising left and right, but only on these two days, it will rise at zero degrees east. This is why perfect alignment to east is also called equinoctial east. Now, what was originally inside the main chamber? An idol of the sun god Surya, a giant statue made of pure gold and studded with diamonds, once stood inside the main chamber. So when the first rays of the sun fell on the idol of Surya, the entire chamber would have dazzled like a light show. But there is another unbelievable mystery that baffles the locals here. If you visit this temple on 21st June at noon, you will be shocked because the temple's shadow will not fall on the ground. Yes, the temple will not cast its shadow on the ground. This may sound like pseudoscience, but if you are standing in this temple on this particular day, even your own shadow will not fall on the ground. I know some of you may not believe me, but we are talking about a pure scientific phenomenon that does not happen in any other ancient temple. 
It happens only in the Modara Sun Temple. How is that possible? Because this temple was intentionally built on a specific line called the Tropic of Cancer. Now, what is the Tropic of Cancer? The Tropic of Cancer is the northernmost line or latitude on Earth at which the sun may appear directly overhead. Beyond this line, the sun will never appear directly overhead or at its zenith. And if you're standing on this line of Tropic of Cancer on 21st June, your shadow will not fall on Earth. Now, what is special about 21st June? It is the longest day of the year called the summer solstice, and the sun goes directly overhead and no shadow will be cast on the ground. This is why the Modara temple's shadow is not cast on the ground on this day. I hope you are understanding the marvel behind this ancient architecture, okay? The builders have covered both the important solar events, the equinox and the solstice, completely opposite events, but both of them are calculated and celebrated in this temple. And you may be surprised that ancient builders marked the Tropic of Cancer accurately and took pleasure in observing that the temple's shadow did not fall on the ground here. But believe it or not, we modern people do the same. All over the world, there are markers and plaques marking the Tropic of Cancer. You can see this signboard, and right next to it, you can see these two lines. In between them is the exact line of Tropic of Cancer. If you come here and stand between these two lines on 21st June at noontime, there will be no shadow. Now, let me show you what ancient builders did in the Modara temple. This is the outer wall of the main chamber. See these two notches? In between these two notches is the exact line of the Tropic of Cancer. And ancient Hindus have marked it, just like how we mark the line today. Why was such precision necessary? Because on the other side of the wall, inside the main chamber, the statue of the sun was placed precisely on this line. That's why. Today, we can do all sorts of precision work with electronic devices, but it's just baffling how ancient builders accurately calculated all these astronomical details. And the interesting part about all these markers, whether they're ancient markers or modern markers, is that they're all temporary. They're perfect when they're put in place, but time keeps changing the Tropic of Cancer. So the marker will be accurate now, but the next year, the Tropic of Cancer will move a little bit. This is because of the axial tilt of the planet. There is a highway in Mexico, the Federal Highway 83, that actually shows how Tropic of Cancer keeps moving every year. And on top of this shift every year, the Earth wobbles back and forth as well. So today, some wise guy will Google Modra Sun Temple's location and say, no, this temple is not accurately placed on the Tropic of Cancer. But the temple was built accurately on the Tropic of Cancer. But after so many centuries, the Tropic of Cancer has moved considerably. In fact, if we calculate when the Tropic of Cancer accurately fell on the temple's latitude, we can find out the exact year of the temple's construction. And it may be much older than archaeological estimates. Now, what is the purpose of the Modara Sun Temple? Why was it built? Maybe you'll say, Praveen, why are you asking such a weird question? Why are temples, churches, or mosques built? 
for worshiping God, obviously. This is true today, but ancient Indian temples were also built for scientific reasons. Think about these markers of a Tropic of Cancer around the world. Are they religious markers? No. Why are they placed? Why are we marking the Tropic of Cancer around the world? There is a scientific reason behind these markers. Is it possible that the Modra Temple was also built as a marker for a scientific reason? Why else would they place the temple exactly on the Tropic of Cancer and dedicate it to the sun itself? This ancient marker is telling us this. To the north of this temple, the sun will never appear directly over your head. So this temple is marking the northernmost point where the sun can appear in the zenith. And you may think, this is nonsense. Who cares if the sun does not appear over your head, right? No, it changes everything. Below this line is the tropical region. It's a lovely place to live, not only for humans, the plants, the animals, everything changes. About this line, it's not so nice. If you live in the United States, what is the one place you want to go to enjoy the weather? Hawaii, right? Why? Because the entire U.S is to the north of the Tropic of Cancer, except Hawaii, which is below the line. This is why you go to Puerto Rico, the Caribbean. All of them are tropical places with great weather, aka getting the good graces of Lord Surya. Why? Because the sun can greet you overhead. If you're above this line, the sunlight will always hit you at a low angle, so you never get great sunlight because the solar energy is spread out with less intensity. But in India, this gets more interesting. The Tropic of Cancer divides India almost exactly into two halves. About this is the North India, which is not tropical. This half of India never gets the sun directly overhead. And below this line is the South India, which is a tropical region filled with tropical plants, animals, and different climatic conditions. But there is a big mystery waiting for you in the main chamber of this temple. Let me show you what's inside. It is locked, and you have to see through this. Today, it is completely empty, but look below, you will see a giant pit. It is hard to see, and I'm trying to shine some light into this, but it's very deep. It's said to be 22 feet deep. Why is there such a large underground structure inside the main chamber? What was originally inside? At the ground level, there was a giant statue of the sun god Surya, at least seven feet tall, said to be made of gold and studded with diamonds. But if it was just a regular statue, why did they create a 22 feet pit going underground? According to some, this was not a regular statue, but it was rotating in mid-air. This is a very intriguing theory that ancient boulders made a statue that was not only floating in midair, but also magically rotating in midair. But was it magic, or were they using advanced technology? Today, we can easily buy these magnetic levitation devices that help objects rotate in midair. You can put an object like this globe between two magnets and the object starts spinning in mid-air. Now we can understand why this underground pit would have been necessary. It would have held some type of a giant magnetic device to help the statue rotate in mid-air. 
But why take such pains to make the sun rotate in mid-air? Ancient India was the place where science and spirituality blended together. The sun seems to be floating in mid-space, but why is the sun god always shown riding a chariot with his seven horses? Where is he going? This doesn't make any sense, right? We know the earth moves around the sun, but ancient people did not know this and thought that the sun moves around the earth. That's why they put him on a chariot to show its movement, right? No, the sun is actually moving at a very, very high speed. It is moving at about 500,000 miles an hour. The moon moves around the earth, the earth moves around the sun, but most people don't know that the sun also moves around the Milky Way galaxy. But why was the sun god made to rotate, right? Does the sun rotate? The sun does rotate on its own axis. This can be observed when you look at the motion of the sunspots on its surface. Ancient boulders not only observed that it rotates, they even calculated its rotation. The entire temple is full of symbols about the science of the sun. There are 28 steps in this tank symbolizing the 28 days taken by the sun to rotate itself. There are a total of 108 small shrines in this tank. And I've made an entire video about the number 108 and its connection to the sun. You can watch it on my channel. The symbolism in this temple is pure insanity. There are a total of 52 pillars in this hall symbolizing 52 weeks of the year. There are 12 sun gods carved outside symbolizing 12 months of the year. There are a total of 365 elephants carved to represent 365 days of the year. Lord Surya is shown with two wives, Sandhya meaning light and Chaya meaning shadow. Ancient builders painted the seven horses of the sun in seven colors of the rainbow, centuries before Newton discovered that white light was made of seven different colors. In fact, when you start thinking, you will be staggered that none of this life is possible without the sun. The plants, the animals, the seasons, the days and nights, the hours, the minute, everything depends on this one thing. We could probably live without any other god, but this sun god? is absolutely essential for our survival. And I hope this temple at Mudra has taught you some valuable information about the sun. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.